It's time to dive into the latest offering from indie game developer Chiller's Art, The Bathhouse. As the title suggests, The Bathhouse takes place in a haunted Japanese bathhouse, and although not as creepy as their previous work, this game did still have an unsettling atmosphere and some real weird characters. But let's dive straight into the story. The game starts out with a young woman called Mina Akimura, who is sick and tired of her job working for a company in the city and is depressed. The job is taking its toll on her health and she wants to quit and move to the countryside, but she can't afford it. However, she spots a flyer which details an apartment in the countryside where rent is free as long as you work in the nearby bathhouse. She contacts the landlord and it's all set. Miner packs her bags and makes her way to her new home. She gets there and she takes her things to room 203. She's met by the landlord who tells her that she stinks, rude, and that she should take a bath. After she's done moving her stuff in, she should meet him at the local bathhouse. In her room, she notices some hair coming out of the wall. Miner spots a strange man wearing a baseball cap, smoking, and it turns out that this man is wanted, judging from a wanted poster placed at various places around the village. The poster roughly translates as him being wanted for the suspected murder of a woman. She also meets a monk who addresses her by saying, you're the new one, I presume. He also warns Miner against working at the bathhouse and tells her that he senses a presence following her around. He offers to bless her in order to protect her. He says that she is welcome there any time for another blessing, but that she must bring a monetary offering next time, otherwise the gods will abandon her. Miner goes to the bathhouse, speaks to the landlord, and she is put straight to work. She serves two customers and then hears a radio report mentioning a 29-year-old woman having gone missing, and that, according to the police, the last thing she did was speak to a woman in her 60s who lives nearby. Because it's quiet, Miner takes a nap. It's now the evening time and Miner hears a shriek. It's one of the male customers who is spooked. He thinks he's seen something in the sauna room. Miner checks it out, but there's nothing there. The customer is still really spooked, so he ends up leaving the bathhouse. Miner still has her tasks to complete, so she cleans stains off the floor. On her way to the women's side of the bathroom, an old lady called Chio makes a remark towards Miner and tells her that a girl like her is perfect for the offering. This woman seems to resemble the description on the earlier radio report. Due to her deal with the landlord, Miner takes a shower, but she hears something shuffling around behind her. But it just turns out to be a monkey. Miner goes home, but although Miner is unaware, it appears that what the male customer saw in the sauna was real. The next day, the 10th of August, the time has come for her next shift at the bathhouse. Outside the bathhouse, there is an elderly woman leaving some flowers and seemingly mourning the loss of someone, which is likely the 29-year-old woman from the report. It's clear that the young woman may have died inside the bathhouse. Miner goes into the bathhouse and starts a shift. A man in a suit comes in and is demanding a drink delivered to him in 15 minutes time. Another customer comes in and tells Miner that she lost her earring and wants to look for it. But then a creepy young woman stands in the doorway, looks at Miner and then leaves. 15 minutes pass and Miner takes the male customer his drink as requested. He tells her that she should work for him as he can pay her a thousand times what she's earning at the bathhouse. Miner turns down the offer. The man scolds her, then leaves. He has a full body of tattoos, indicating that he may have been a gang member or, namely, a member of the Yakuza. The man leaves and Miner gets to work cleaning out the bathhouse. The power goes out though, and Miner notices the lights have gone out for the entire street, except for the electronics store. After checking the power box, noticing that it's locked, Miner goes into the store and the clerk is the woman who was looking for her earring earlier on. This creepy woman refers to her appliances as her babies. They're all plugged in and it's possible that the store is using or hijacking the power supply belonging to the bathhouse. Either that or they share it. It's interesting to know that one of Miner's tasks on the bathhouse whiteboard was to find out why the electricity bills were so high. So I think we now know why. Miner needs the key for the box so she creates a distraction by setting off the fire alarm and she grabs the key, opens the box and restores power. She cleans the bathhouse, but finds a stain on the wall that she cannot remove. What's more is that the stain resembles the image of a young woman. After finishing her cleaning duties, Miner takes a bath. She is in the bath, but looks at the door, and sees the creepy woman from before standing in the doorway, looking at her, and then she walks away. But she sees something in the water with her. Miner leaves and then goes back home. 
but while she's back home, the men's side of the bathroom has been closed for cleaning, whilst the monk from the temple is seemingly blessing the bathhouse or praying. Mina has been noticing that the hair coming out of the wall in her room has been growing longer each passing day. The following day, she goes to the bathhouse again, and the old woman, Chio, who remarked that she'd be perfect for the sacrifice, shows up again, this time with a friend, and they both remark on how weird Mina is, and the friend says that she doesn't like the look in Mina's eyes. A man enters the bathhouse, and he's not a customer. He's a religious man committed to a religion called Chilatekis. The man tells Mina that she needs help, but it's okay because she is loved by Chilatekis. He gives her the spirit of Chilatekis, a golden statue called Chilapipin, and demands 100,000 yen. Mina tells him she can't pay it. The guy huffs and leaves. 20 minutes later, the old woman shows up and makes the same remark she did before, that Mina will be perfect for the offering. One of the jobs on Mina's to-do list involves picking up some baking soda from the local candy store, which of course, she considers strange. On the way to the store, Mina speaks to a man selling sweet potatoes off of his cart, and to say this man is a sweet potato aficionado would be an understatement. After answering all of the man's potato-related quiz questions, Mina wins the ultimate prize her very own sweet potato. In the candy store, the attendant is pretty strange too, as she asks to see Mina's eyes. This woman has a missing cat, and after Mina finds the missing cat and returns it, the store owner gives Mina a doll and a key for a chest, which contains baking soda. Very odd, almost as if it's been set up. Mina returns to the bathhouse and gets to work on using the baking soda to clean the shower heads. Mina decides to relax in the sauna and looks to her left. And she sees the ghostly apparition of the young woman who was standing in the doorway. The following day, the woman who was seemingly mourning someone outside the bathhouse days before is crossing the street. On her way to the bathhouse and noticing that the doll received the day before now has blood on it, Mina approaches the woman, called Matsuno, who says that she is mourning her granddaughter. During Mina's shift, a lady enters the bathhouse with her young son called Shotaro. Shotaro runs out of the women's section of the bathhouse and into the men's, and then starts crying in pain. It seems this young child put their own hand into the fan, and after doing some first aid, Mina is blamed by the young boy who tells his mother that Mina forced his hand into the fan. The mother is furious, naturally, and tells Mina that she'll never use the bathhouse again. Mina hears a knocking coming from behind the women's bathroom door. It's the freaked out male customer from her first shift, who is still scared of the sauna and the men's side of the bathhouse, and has been trying to use the women's side. He needs some toilet paper, so Mina gets it for him, and then the man runs off. Nonetheless, Mina begins her cleaning duties and unclogs the drains in the bathhouse. As usual, Mina decides to have a shower, but after she's done, she hears whispering coming from one of the baths. She investigates, of course, and gets startled and pulled into the water by the ghost. Mina has been seemingly pulled into another realm, a mirror of the physical realm, and everything is blood red. Mina tries in vain to hide or escape, but to no avail, as thick hair covers the entrance, and Mina is caught by the ghostly woman. Mina is then considered a missing person. The point of view now switches to Mina's sister, Arena Akimura, who is aware of where Mina was going, and she goes to investigate her disappearance. After being dropped off in the village, Arena goes to her sister's room and knocks on the door, but no one is home. The landlord, almost as if waiting to pounce, approaches Arena. The landlord lies to Arena and says that Mina has gone away with friends on a trip and will be back later that week. He offers her a job while she waits for her sister to return, and Arena accepts. The landlord gives her the key to the neighbouring room, and inside is a doll identical to the one that Mina received from the woman in the candy store, with this one also featuring blood on it. Arena starts her first shift at the bathhouse, and she serves the man from the wanted posters. He gives Arena 5 yen for a bath towel. Another customer enters the bathhouse. Arena takes her money and gives her a towel, but in an instant, Mina appears before Arena, and Mina runs off into the bathing area, giggling. Arena goes after her and the woman she served before is in there stating that the baths are freezing cold. Arena asks if the woman saw her sister, but the woman says that she's the only one in there. Arena states that the boiler must have broken down, 
and the customer demands it's fixed, and in the meantime she'll go to the sauna room. Irena finds the key for her sister's room on the floor in the bathhouse. Whilst leaving the bathhouse to go to her sister's room, Irena is approached by Matsuno, who says that Irena doesn't have much time and that she shouldn't be there. Irena uses the 5 yen from the wanted man to make an offering at the temple and pulls part of a newspaper clipping out of an omikuji box. Irena enters Mina's room. Her doll sits on her bed along with another piece of the newspaper clipping. Irena removes the flooring underneath her sister's bedding and finds a diary written by someone named Yoko. Yoko explains in her diary that the village turned on her for some reason. Her life was going downhill until she met the monk at the temple, the monk that Mina met during her first day in the village. She said the monk cared for her and loved her, but the monk said that they need to keep the relationship a secret. Irena also finds the third and final newspaper clipping. Put together, the newspaper explains that the 29-year-old woman who died in the bathhouse was called Yoko Inukobo, the same Yoko who wrote the previous diary entry. The report states January, and it's now August, meaning that eight months have passed since her disappearance. There is something scribbled on the back of the clipping, and it says, Inside the Ashes. Taking this as a clue, Irena searches the ashes from the furnace and finds a key. A key for the previously locked and taped off door at the rear of the boiler room. After fixing the boiler issue, Irena heads through the door and outside is a hatch leading underground. What she finds down there shocks her to her core. She finds a man down there chained up and judging from his appearance, he's been there for a long time. What's more, this man matches what the male customer Futa saw in the sauna room whilst he was bathing. This thing must have gotten out and this is why the male area was closed off at one point. Irena also finds documents down there which explain exactly what's going on. One note on the floor is a plan outlined by the monk. It details that this evil monk hadn't exactly been living by his own code. He had slept with a woman years ago and got her pregnant. He killed the woman during childbirth, but she successfully gave birth to a son. The monk had unknowingly released a yokai, a Japanese spirit called Ubume. This is a yokai created out of the circumstance of being murdered during childbirth. The Ubume then placed a curse upon the monk. So through the monk stating in his plan to hold off on killing the son, we can deduce that this man locked up in the basement is the monk's son. What's more is that this poor soul is the person being whipped by the monk at the start of the game. According to the book in the basement regarding the summoning of Ubume, the monk required three sacrifices, the blood of women in order to lift the curse. Three women who had been chosen by the cursed deceased. The first sacrifice was Yoko and Nakobo, the second sacrifice was Mina Akimura, and the third sacrifice was to be Arena. There is also a note down in the underground area written by the landlord who, it seems, has been coerced into helping the monk carry out his evil deeds. The landlord has essentially been luring women to the bathhouse to work there, otherwise the Ubume would curse and kill him. Other members of the village were likely complicit too. The lady in the candy store, Umeki, had given the sisters the dolls. These dolls were crucial as they essentially bound the women to the curse and they became chosen as the sacrifice. Anyway, with all this information in her mind, Irena can choose to free the man or keep him there, but she goes back to the bathhouse and goes to inform the customer that the boiler is fixed. But to her surprise, her sister Mina is standing in place of the customer and she runs off again and disappears. Irena takes a shower and in the mirror she sees the spirit we now know is the Ubume. It seems she's chosen her final sacrifice and Irena is pulled into the Ubume's world. The Ubume chases Irena while she runs back to her room and when inside, she's knocked out by the Ubume. The landlord then arrives to carry Irena to the bathhouse, specifically to the boiler room to be used as the final sacrifice. Okay, now there are two endings to this game. In the bad ending, Irena didn't free the captive man and she is burned and sacrificed in the furnace. However, the Ubume tricked the monk. He's not free at all. The monk actually explodes. She then escapes from her own realm and into the world of the living as a hostile entity. And the Ubume also kills the landlord too. In the good ending, Irena freed the man held captive and before the monk and landlord can sacrifice her, the man saves her and sets the monk and landlord on fire, killing them. He then presumably drags Irena out into the street while the bathhouse burns to the ground. She is then approached unconscious in the street by Matsuno, Yoko's grandmother, who gets help and Irena is committed to hospital. But even stranger is the fact that Irena doesn't remember who Mina is. Now this is where things got slightly confusing. 
When in hospital, Arena was questioned by the police. The police said that no one should be living in that village. This leads us to believe that the people or the locals that Arena and Miner encountered weren't even real, that they were ghosts. I mean, this could be strengthened when you consider that, on a few occasions, locals commented on Miner's eyes, and the locals themselves, well, their eyes are not visible at all. This was also potentially why the landlord was confused that the electricity bill was so high for the bathhouse because, as far as he knew, the electronics store was not being used. What's more is that when locals run off, they simply vanish. There could be that the monk had cursed the entire village and that there were many restless souls wandering about waiting for their chance to be set free. This could explain why Chio tells Miner that she is perfect for the sacrifice. As for the man in the wanted posters, well, it could be that the monk, due to his standing in the community, pointed out the man as being a prime suspect in the disappearance of Yoko, to deflect from himself, an attempted cover-up if you like. And then there was the lost pipe from the bathhouse boiler room. It's not really clear as to why it was placed in the bin storage, but it's clear that from where Chio was stood, by the lockers, she was hiding a key for the bin storage area. And this is where the sweet potato came in as Miner used the sweet potato in order to get the crow to drop the locker key. As for the hair coming out of the wall, well, it's clear that room 203 was the room inhabited by Yoko at the time of her death. And finally, the fact that Irena didn't have any memory of her sister being named Miner. This is a wild theory, but it's possible that some kind of curse was placed upon Arena, making her believe that she did indeed have a sister called Minor, when in fact, she didn't. Then when the curse was broken, all knowledge of her even having a sister was lifted. If you have any more theories, then please leave them below. But if you enjoyed this video, then please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're not already. But for now, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.